Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, it is Donnie here coming at you with a mini tutorial this time about the LS PCI and the LS USB utilities. The reason I say that it's a mini tutorial is that there's really not a whole lot you can say about them, but you need to know about them because if you ever plan to go for an entry level Linux certification exam, you're almost surely going to see questions about these two utilities. So it's good to know about them, okay? Even if you never plan to use them, although, yeah, you might use them, you still want to know about them. But the LSPCI utility will show you information about stuff that's connected to the PCI bus. Yeah, duh. And the LS USB utility will show you information about stuff that's connected to the USB bus. Again, Duh. <laughs> you would never have guessed from those names, right? Anyway, let's go over here to the Fedora machine. And this machine is my famous Hewlett Packard XW9400 that was made back in 2009. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Still serves the purpose. That's all I care about. But anyway, uh, first let's do LSPCI and... You need to use this with sudo. And there you have it. And I'm not going to go through each and every item here. You're probably going to be thankful for that, I'm sure. But uh, you will see a lot of stuff there that pertains to the NVIDIA chipset, which is on that machine. And you also see stuff that pertains to the AMD Optron processors that are on that machine. And here you see information about the Texas Instruments Firewire port that's on that machine. Lots of other good stuff, right? So, as I say, I'm not going to go through each and everything on here, but you can do this on your own machine and look at it at your leisure. And then we can go over here. This is an orange pie. And you see there, okay, it's an orange pie. That doesn't have a PCI bus, okay? So we're not going to get anything from that. Fair enough, all right? But anyway, uh, then we can go over here to the Debian machine, also a Hewlett Packard, except this one has a pair of hexacore processors instead of a pair of quad core processors. Okay, and you see pretty much the same stuff that we saw on the Fedora machine. Well, to be expected since they're both Hewlett Packards, the same Hewlett Packard model. But let's say that you want to see a little bit more detail. You can do a dash V, which will put this in verbose mode. And so you see a little bit more information there, a little bit more detailed information about the PCI stuff. And you can actually do a dash VV, or you can actually do up to four Vs. The more Vs you put in here, up to a total of four Vs, the more detailed information that you get. But if you put four Vs in there, you're probably going to get way more information than what you need, unless you are a hardcore hardware geek. So generally, I find it useful just to go ahead and just, you know, do one V at the most. And I don't go beyond that. And usually, I don't even need one V. Okay? So anyway, that brings us up then to the LSUSB. So we can do sudo LSUSB. And we get that. Not real exciting, right? So with LSUSB, you have to have at least one V in order to get any meaningful information at all. So we can do that. And you get information at the yin-yang, basically, about your USB ports. You even get information about the milliwatts 
that they supply, the milliwatts of power that they supply, and lots of other good information there too, right? And you will also be able to see the USB devices that you might have connected. Like on this machine here, I don't have any USB devices connected, believe it or not. But we can go over here to the Orange Pi. Okay, so there's the Orange Pi basic information. We do a dash V. And we have more detailed information there. And if we scroll up here, we should see information about a USB keyboard that I have connected to this Orange Pi. Let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? See it someplace? There we go. We have the keyboard. Right there. We have a USB keyboard connected to the Orange Pi. And up here we see the vendor of that USB keyboard, which happens to be a Light On Technology Corporation USB wired keyboard. So yeah, cool stuff there, right? And then we can come over here on this Debian machine. And again, not real exciting there, except it does tell us that we have a Logitech headset hooked up to this one. And we also have an integrated technology express card reader hooked up to it. So that's pretty cool. And the card reader is actually, it's uh, one, it's uh, one of these aftermarket things you can get. You actually put it in place of where like uh, uh, CD-ROM would go and hook it up to your USB port that way internally. So it's pretty cool. And we can do a dash V. And again, get more information about all that good stuff. And we can go back up here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. There we go. Uh, information there about our integrate, yeah, about our integrated technology express SD MMC card reader. And we go on down someplace. We'll, we're going to see information about that Logitech headset as well. There we go. There's the Logitech headset. So the Alice USB, as well as things, it could come in handy. If you've got a USB device, you plug it into your Linux machine and you find that it's not really working as you would expect it, you could use the USB command or the LSUSB command rather in order to see whether the machine is actually recognizing that device. So that's pretty cool stuff, right? And at any rate, as I said before, these are two utilities that you can expect to see on an entry-level Linux certification exam. So keep that in mind, okay? So anyway, that's all I got for this video. If you like it, be sure to like and subscribe. And also there's a bell icon there too. If you want to be notified of future videos, hit that bell icon and let it go dong. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I got. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.